The internet is like several types of Borg. You have the shock jock group, the realist group, the social justice group which professes that we're all victims except for whom they deem the oppressors. There's the contrarian group, the narcissistic group, the bully group, and the group that says, everything is happiness, it has to be. Please don't remove my rose-tinted glasses or I'll have to cry while smiling brightly. The last example being those whom are usually some of the most genuinely nice people out there. But some of their niceness is their obliviousness and naivety. Ignorance is bliss, after all. There are many introverted and extroverted combinations in society. Consumerism, technology, media, and other factors influence our culture and eventually define our cultural values. The way we've been changing lately isn't for the benefit of individualism, nor is it a benefit for humanity. But those values can change again in time, and they will. Bad situations can change those things in a hurry. RPGs, like Dungeons and Dragons, there is something to creating characters that is so important to look at as far as human characteristics, personalities, and values. It's obviously a little bit different in real life than in RPGs, but at least RPGs let people look at those possibilities. With RPGs, when creating a character, you have a set number of total points that you can put into attributes of a character, but you pick and choose which ones. So, if you put almost everything in one area, you won't be able to make any of the other attributes worth much of anything. In real life, there are personality traits, values, and mental attributes that are on axes. If you excel in one area, it's pretty much a guarantee that on the opposite side of that axis, you suck. It's not an issue of being able to bring those other things up, it's an absolute. You will suck in the area that's the opposite side of the axis if you excel on the side that you do. If you have empathy towards one kind of thing, you will have apathy in the opposite kind of thing. If you think one type of thing is important, you will think the opposite type of thing is unimportant. As much as you may think you can defy that kind of thing, you can't. That's just the way it is. And there are all these combinations, almost like every person you meet, you can visualize a key that their combinations of attributes represent. Any viewpoint has positives and negatives. In those combinations that a viewpoint offers, there are things you worry about and other things you don't worry about. And those combinations of things is some of what makes you, you. And yes, you can change yourself to a certain degree, as I said, to a certain degree. And this happens the most when you honestly look at the patterns of your own behavior, your own values, but you have to do it in a way where you're not putting yourself down for having had those patterns. Because everyone else has their patterns as well. Everyone has their key combination. Here's an argument that people really seem to hate. It is what it is. On both sides, people get angry and pissy about the other side saying, it is what it is. This is on either side of an axis of a discussion. People then essentially argue, well, it, it isn't what it is, and I'm going to put my foot down and declare it loudly. Yep, that's right. Things are not actually what they really are. Pessimism is actually optimism and the other way around. Introversion is actually extroversion and the other way around, because things aren't actually what they really are. Let's change the language so nothing makes sense anymore. And then let's argue against those parts of our language being changed in ways that also don't make any sense. Let's have one irrational viewpoint arguing against its opposite. Yep, that'll do us a lot of good. All white people are racist. Black people need to stop committing crimes. All atheists are immoral. All religious people are delusional. We demand a safe space. There's no such thing as online bullying. All men are misogynistic. Women aren't oppressed and have never been oppressed. If you want proof that someone was raped, you're a rape apologist. Most women fantasize about being raped. Alrighty then. Because crackers love cheese. Joni loves chachi. Love loves hate. Hate hates love. Let's all put our arms around each other and sing the song that makes the whole world jizz all at the same time, even if they're at work, during surgery, during a brain scan, while flying a plane, while picking their nose, while picking their friend's nose, while someone sucks the snot from someone else's nose who has a cold. So I get that people are not feeling like they can be themselves. I get that people are feeling like other people don't care if people can be themselves. I get 
that the reality is that we can be whatever kind of person we want to be. We can't have skills or talents we don't have, but we can have whatever combination of values we would like to have, but we first have to actually evaluate the values we actually have and not some fake image in our heads of what our values are. And we also have to realize that when we bring certain things up, other areas go down. One of the reasons, as I've talked about before, that people are not feeling like they can be themselves is because of the extroverted commercialization and consumerism which attempts to bring out the introversion in the way we think about those things that makes us feel like the consumerism smeared in our faces actually is our culture and that we don't have the right to be a part of another culture because we're all just humans who drink Coca-Cola and shop at Walmart while taking selfies to stop lung cancer. People are discontented with things that aren't even the problem and people seem to have answers to problems that aren't actually answers, but you know, it sure feels good to complain, doesn't it? <laughs>